something else, too. And take a little conspiracy. Conspiracy? A nice little conspiracy. We feel that most people are going to be able to use Cigarron right away. We have machines, we've been selling machines for quite some time now that have Cigarons attached to them, and now we've been selling them with, with Cigarons uh, already installed within them. However, as technology increases, we'll be able to reduce the size of, of the delivery platform, in other words, the machine itself, to much like a paperback book. You've seen things like uh, the, um, the Sony Discman, things like that, where it, the machine itself is slightly, slightly bigger than the actual disc. We see technology increasing to the point where we can actually get information uh, from a, from a CD-ROM, from a computer CD-ROM, onto that kind of format. The, the whole, whole thing's information Retrieval is, is key to CD-ROM technology. Without the, the engine to, to be able to retrieve information, all that information at your fingertips won't get to, to how to it is a usable form. So it's very important for us to work not only on the, the, the how to store the information on, on the, the, uh, the CD-ROM, but also on the ability to retrieve it. And we've done millions of dollars of research of key interface diagrams, things like that, that make it easy for people to look at the information. InnoTech a Toronto-based CD-ROM company takes advantage of the fact that so much information can be stored on a CD-ROM. They produce large but very portable databases for companies. Entire inventories of companies can be contained on a single disk. Many companies have found the CD-ROM a very cost-effective way of not only storing information, but also distributing that information. Just like its high-quality audio cousin, the music CD, once the first disc is made, reproduction of other discs costs only a few dollars. The CD-ROM can also store computer programs. Many business and graphic programs are now available in this format. I'd like to show you a new product from Microsoft that takes advantage of an exciting technology called multimedia. There's little doubt that the CD-ROM has found a strong niche in the business market. The question remains, will the technology filter down to the general public? Does the average person need or want to have access to millions of bytes of information? Um, going down to the consumer level and to the business level, people are being able to accept the technology more. It's being incorporated into units like Apple Macintoshes. Um, I think it's going to the masses. It used to be a very limited technology, but it's becoming more of a broad-based, widespread appeal. You're seeing the convergence of a lot of different industries going towards it. The personal com computer, the telecommunications, the content industry, the book publishers. I think that's going to keep it going. So I see a lot more people getting into um, the uses of a CD um, where they don't have to pay attention to the actual underlying stuff under it. And that's one of the things that at a conference like this you'll see um, a number of people are somewhat considered experts or the first ones into it. And then there's the total novice that has come here to find out more about it. But there's, um, you know, I, th I think most importantly, people have to understand, understand that uh, the benefits that will get out of it, uh, you know, technology will continue to change. It always does. And so um, those who wait and wait for the next thing to come along are going to be those that lose out on opportunities um, in areas of training and education. CD-ROM technology is also making headway in areas traditionally dominated by print. Alice to Oceans is one of the first books to be produced as CD-ROM. It contains not only pictures, but the recorded voices of the author and his subject. So Robin Davidson did her trip. Uh, it, was a, it was an assignment for National Geographic. At least that's the way the world perceived it. Now there's 15 million... Several companies are experimenting with the concept of magazines on CD-ROM. This is the opening screen for Multimedia Nuts and Bolts. We have the option of selecting either by a product name, by a category, vendor, or go directly into the editorial. Well, the advantage of having a magazine on CD-ROM is, first of all, we have so much storage space available to us on the CD-ROM, we can truly get into more depth on certain articles and features than you can on a traditional magazine-type format. As a matter of fact, we include interactive articles, interactive brochures, and also something we call an interactive editorial. So you will be able to go through and select on the advertorial and see an extensive look at an emerging technology, for example, Photo CD. You'd be able to see what the technology means to the industry, how it's being used, and what it means to uh, the users. Traditionally, desktops have been the only place that you could run a CD-ROM. Uh, what we'll see down the road is CD-ROMs being incorporated into very small laptops such as this, so it's very easy to take it anywhere you choose. And then there are CD-ROMs solely for entertainment.
Many uses of this technology are still experimental, and some feel the CD-ROM is a solution in search of a problem. The general public may not be committed to CD-ROM yet, but many large companies such as IBM, Kodak, and Apple are betting millions of dollars of research and development that this technology will soon become as common as VCRs. Just as the wild wildebeest galloped willfully across the Serengeti, so too the facts now run rampant in the information age. That it can be your friend, but first you must collect it. Better yet, learn to track only the facts you like, then ambush, rope, hog tie them. With information under your control, everything else will soon be within your grasp. <laughs> Coming up after the break on Tomorrow Today, lightning strikes twice.